okay uh, a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers uh, and sisters in christ we thank our uh, heavenly father and the lord and savior jesus christ uh, for giving uh, yet another opportunity to discuss his holy words uh, to study his precious uh, wonderful words of life uh, dear brethren uh, we have seen uh, so many important uh, subjects till now and we know that uh, the season now is a festival season so very important for all the christians uh, because uh, coming uh, monday so what do we have coming monday december 20th christmas christmas yes christmas very good so how is, how is your preparation going on no preparation brother no preparation are why yearly once it comes only one festival so you're not celebrating the festival huh no do want to celebrate ah Uh, no brother we used to celebrate but nowadays we we are celebrating <laughs> okay so today let us see about uh, christmas because this is a season where christians greet uh, one another saying merry christmas merry christmas uh, you see this is the season where we can uh, see all the churches are uh, decorated beautifully with christmas trees with lot of uh, colorful lights stars uh, you see the the moons and various types of uh, gifts uh, are given uh, generally to all the people uh, and uh, you can hear the songs singing um, glory to the highest uh, and on earth uh, peace and joy towards men you see and uh, singing uh, christmas songs so the christmas carols are there we will be visiting um, every house of a christian and uh, you see and encourage uh, them and uh, they do prayer uh, in uh, all the places so dear brethren so this is the uh, uh, about uh, christmas uh, we see santa claus uh, you see and we see the reindeer uh, you see uh, so all these things uh, are there uh, in christmas uh, so today we will take some time and uh, study this very very important subject uh, which uh, each and every christian has to know so what is the main thing uh, that is in christmas uh, you see uh, the birth of christ uh, christmas is remembered as the birth of christ uh, so what is main in the birth of christ what is that everybody puts in their house in the birth uh, on december 25th during this season Hmm? Tell me. Uh, Christmas tree, yeah. lights. Yeah. Then, important thing you forgot. What do they put outside the house? Outside the house. Ah. On the balcony or on the terrace. A uh, Santa Claus gift. Ah. Then. And Merry Christmas. Ah, uh, good. Then, what do they hang? Mm -hmm. outside the house oh huh? stars ah stars you see outside their house each and every christian puts a star okay why because they claim uh, you see when jesus was born a star guided uh, uh, the birthplace of christ this is the reason star is very important so a way to identify christians uh, this time is that uh, we can see the stars in their house okay so how is the star related to jesus if you put this question to tell yeah it is given in the bible brother please read let us read that verse numbers 2417 amar brother can you read numbers 2417 Okay, numbers twenty-four seventeen. Twenty-four seventeen. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not night. 
there shall come a star out of Jacob and scripture shall rise or rise out of Israel and shall uh, smit the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. See, he says, uh, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. You see, a star out of Jacob. So based on this one, you see this scripture, the thing that uh, Jesus is the star that came out of Jacob. You see, and this star, uh, you see, is Jesus. Uh, hence, uh, when uh, the, you see, the wise men, uh, they came, you see, they were led to the place of Jesus by this star. Okay. Now let us take time and read what actually happened uh, regarding the star which guided uh, the wise men who came. This is given to us in Matthew 2nd chapter. So everybody please open your Bibles to Matthew 2nd chapter. Let us read from verse uh, 1. Uh, Joel Bhutar, please read from verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judua, in the days of Heros the king, behold, there come wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Mm, you see, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, when during the days of Herod, a king, behold, there came wise men from where? From east to Jerusalem. It seems so. So, where is this uh, wise men came? Were they from Israel? Where did they come from? Did you observe the scriptures? It doesn't say that uh, G these were the Jewish people. These uh, were the people from the east. The Bible says that these were the wise men, you see, who came from the east. Okay. Now, they came from the east direction. Now, where did they go? What did they do? Next, verse 2. Mm. Anya brother, please read. Uh, uh, Joel brother, please read. Continue till I finish your chapter 2. You please continue all the verses. Okay, brother. Saying, where is the where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Uh, see, they came in search of Jesus and said, where is the born who is one? The king of the Jews. How did they inquire? They inquired saying, where is the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. Where? In Israel. No, 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 no. no. It says we have seen his star in East. From the place where we came, we have seen his star and we have come to worship him. Okay. Now the three, you see, actually the three wise men is not given in the Bible. So, everybody thinks it is three. But actually, there were many wise men who came. You see, the wise men came to Jerusalem in search of a king. Now, you tell me, king means, uh, where will the king be born? The king of the Jews. Where will a king be born? Tell me. King's palace. Palace, isn't it? So, king should be in the palace, no? So, immediately... Directly they went to the palace. Who was there in the palace? Herod. They went and met Herod and said, Where is the king? You see, the king of the Jews that is born. We are come from very far from the east to worship him. You see, dear brethren, first of all, you see, Claiming to be a king in Israel was not a so easy thing. You know, because the people of Israel were ruled by Roman people. And uh, they did not like uh, another king to have in Israel. Huh? You see? And first of all, Herod himself did not like it. Why? Because Herod had killed his brother 
and married his wife, you see, for himself, like a sister-in-law. He had married her. This was a sin. Imagine, for the sake of kingship, he has killed his own brother. Now, if anybody comes and tells that where is the king that is to rule Israel, we come to see him, will he keep quiet? So, what happened to him? Read in verse 3, it says that Herod was much troubled. Read, brother. Verse 3. Continue, brother. Huh? When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Ah, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Why should he be troubled? If the king of the Jews is one, he should be happy, no? He is also a Jew. But instead of that one, he was much troubled. You see, because he never wanted somebody to rule in his place. You see, dear brethren, we all know the condition of the Roman, uh, you see, people that uh, even when they arrested Jesus, how did they present Jesus before Pilate? Uh, so before Pilate, uh, they presented uh, him as one claiming to be the king. You see, so that the, uh, Pilate may be provoked, immediately, uh, you see, crucify Jesus. Uh, you see, dear brethren, you can, leave, you can note it down. It's in uh, Luke uh, 23rd chapter, verse 1 and 2. They made false accusations against Christ, you see, claiming that he is the king of the Jews. But do we see anywhere in the scriptures that Jesus claiming himself to be the king? No. Jesus never claimed himself to be the king. Pilate questions him, are you the king? See, they are telling that you are a king. Are you the king? What did Jesus reply? Jesus replied, you said so. I am not claiming, you see, if I am the king... My soldiers would fight for me. My people will fight for me. But my kingdom is not of this world. You see, that means Jesus never open proclaimed that he is the king. You see, neither when the people, you see, compelled him to make him a king. He never agreed for it. In, you see, but immediately he passed away from the midst of the crowd who thought to crown him as a king. So dear brethren, Jesus never came as a king at the first advent. So, immediately, you see, the wise men went directly to the palace. Why? Because they thought usually, you see, prince is born means what happens? He should be born in a palace only and he should be welcomed with red carpet, all sorts of gift, the function should be there in Israel. But when they came and saw Herod, Herod himself is so much troubled. Now, what happened? Now, Herod immediately calls all the scribes. Scribes is what? Uh, the writers, historians. And uh, he called all the priests uh, and the scholars in Israel. And he found out what does the Bible say regarding the birth of uh, the king of Israel. See, Matthew 2nd chapter, verse 4 to 6, brother. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of the shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. See? What happened is him, sir? You see, dear brethren, huh? immediately Herod did not neglect it. Immediately called for the scribes and the chief priest because they are well, very well versed in the scriptures. So they might be definitely knowing what does the prophecy say. So immediately when they Asked, you see, they immediately replied, as per the prophecy, you should be born in Bethlehem at such and such time. Now, Herod, he tallied for the huh? sentences, the wise men's words and the scriptures words through the chief priest and the scribes, he tallied 
Oh, then this is correctly matching. Immediately, what did you do? Huh? He sent out the priest and the scribes. Then he again called the three wise men. You see? Huh? See, what did they say to the wise men? Verse 7 and 8 were there. Huh? Then Herod, when he had repeatedly called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Ah, and he... You see, what did he do? He called them privately. You see, and inquired about them diligently what time the star appeared. So he has studied well huh? what they are claiming is uh, right or wrong. Is it correct or not? Uh, is it really matching the prophecies, uh, the words of the, you see, scribes and the chief priest? Uh, then he took a decision. What did he say? Continue, Buddha. Uh. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Ah, what did he say? He sent them to Bethlehem. He sent them to Bethlehem because the wise men did not know where the child was born, where the child was supposed to be born. But when he inquired from the scriptures, he came to know that that child should be born where? In Bethlehem. Once Herod got the confirmation, he told, go search the child. I'll give you rights, permission. Go. Go to where? Go to Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Sorry, go to Bethlehem. And Bethlehem was six kilometers far from Jerusalem. So he told, you go. I'll come and what? Worship him. If you find the child, please come and inform me. I will come and worship the child. Now you all know very well. Huh? Do you think uh, Herod would uh, worship the child if the wise men would return back and uh, tell the good news about Jesus' birth to Herod? Huh? Would he really worship Jesus? Huh? Tell me. No. no. He, he wouldn't have worshipped Jesus. Uh, we all know what happened later. Huh? He killed all the child who were two years old. Huh? Isn't it? He would have worshipped Jesus. Huh? You would have cut neatly, you see, day of the end. So once the wise men went out from the palace of Herod, immediately what happened? Read verse 9. Hmm. When they had heard the king, they departed, and, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Ah, now what happened? As soon as they left the palace of Herod, immediately since that time, the star began to move. Where did it rest? It rested exactly at the place where the child was born. So, you see, the star guided the child now when after leaving Herod's palace. Dear brother, you tell me, this star was a sign for whom? Tell me, this star was a sign for whom? Huh? Think. You should think. You see, if really this star was of God, you see, this star could have directly guided the wise men to the birthplace of Jesus. Why wait until they went to meet Herod? Why wait until they got the information from Herod that he was supposed to be born in Bethlehem? If really this was from God, this was guidance from God, you see, a star could have directly from the east guided them exactly to the place where Jesus was born. But he did not do so. Once they left Herod's place, then only the star came and landed exactly in the place where child was. Now you tell me, this sign of the star moving was actually for whom? Was it for the wise men or was it for whom? Other, tell me. Hmm? 
you all did you all understand you're all there you're listening yes for jesus huh? this is for jesus ah huh? huh? why does jesus require a star yeah we are listening huh this was yeah. a clear sign for herod you see because herod did not know the place where the child was born you see so satan used the star as a tool to correctly guide herod where the child was born immediately see read what happened read verse 10 11 and 12 ah when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and when they were come come into the house they saw the young child with mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gift gold and frankincense sense and myrrh and being warned of god in a dream that they should not return to herod they departed into their own country another way ah. the flight to egypt you see what happened immediately as soon as the wise men came they offered gifts how many gifts were offered three somebody think only three were came no 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 just because three gifts were given doesn't mean that only three wise men had come many would have come dear brethren but as soon as they offered the gift and worshiped our lord immediately what was the warning of the god you see verse 11 clear huh? verse 12 clearly says and being warned of god you see in a dream that they should not return to herod so they returned to the own country another way if really this star was of god it could have clearly guided them in another way exactly to the place of jesus birth but it not do so it only moved after you see the left the herod place so immediately what happened immediately immediately the angel also warned mary and joseph you see arise so take the child immediately why because that place is come to known by whom herod so herod is immediately sending his army to kill all the children especially to kill this child you see when so what happened immediately mary and joseph took the child and went to egypt read verse 13 brother ha huh? and when they were departed behold the angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flew into egypt and be the and be the there until i bring the word for herod will seek the young child to destroy him okay there are the seeing this same child to destroy him devdran this is a very clear clear trick of the devil you see to kill jesus why why satan is against jesus if you see devdran we all know very well you see that uh, the seed of the human the subject to hope you all remember huh? the seed of the woman the head of the body is jesus christ the body members in the church so he knew very well that once the seed of the woman comes it will immediately crush very soon you see the head of the serpent so satan knew very well that if uh, the seed of the woman is not allowed to be born that would be very good he tried even that one also to kill uh, when jesus was in the womb of mary by stoning her to death but what happened uh, then god warned joseph you see ha huh? joseph married mary so when jesus was saved but here also as soon as jesus was born satan tried to kill him through herod but unfortunately god did not allow this one god warned joseph and mary immediately they fled to egypt now read verse 16 what happened in this brother verse 16 ha uh. then herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men was exceeding wrath wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in bethlehem and in all the coast thereof 
from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Ah, see what is given here? Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the wise men, that means he had particularly sent the wise men for what purpose? Huh? So that uh, you see, he may clearly come to know where Jesus was born. You see, so the Herod's purpose was to kill Jesus. Uh, dear brethren, so uh, the wise men mocked uh, Herod, they cheated him, they went away in different way. You see, and by the time he could reach the place where the star was guiding, you see, Mary and uh, Joseph also they escaped to Egypt. So once he was mocked, uh, immediately gave the commandment saying that all the child below two years should be killed in Bethlehem. You see, dear brethren. So you clearly tell me, now this is a sign for uh, uh, God's children, uh, that uh, where Jesus is born for identification. Uh. No, dear brethren. This star, therefore, is not of our Lord at all. Uh, is not from God at all. Uh. You see, dear brethren, this is a clear trick of the devil, clearly to kill the seed of the woman. Because, see, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. So whatever we do or study, the entire thing should be there from the Bible. See, when God gave the law to the people of Israel, he had clearly told them that nobody should observe the movement of the stars and be, you see, surprised by it. That means God never approved astronomy, astrology, by seeing the scientists, you see, science in the sky and all those things. This is totally forbidden by God. Let us read a few verses. Deuteronomy 18, chapter, brother, uh, 9 to 12. Anil, brother, can you read? Deuteronomy 18, chapter, 9 to 12. When thou art come into the land, who is the Lord thy God giveth thee? Thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There, there shall not be found among you and anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an ob observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an ambition unto the Lord and because of these ambitions the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. God had clearly warned when you go to the land of Canaan you should never allow these people to live there. You should kill them. Who are they? The one who, uh, who uses divination, the observer of times. What do you mean observer of times? Oh, sun's movement is there, moon's movement is there, eclipse is there. You see, so based on this only, what is their observers of time? You have no, huh? in other religions, you see, such and such time, oh, good time. Huh? This is auspicious time. After that one, bad time will come. Arre, all the seasons and times are created by God. How can it be good and particularly bad? This was the deception of the devil. When God himself has warned the people of Israel not to follow it and would kill everybody, do you think God will send a sign in the sky to observe it and follow huh, where Jesus is born? Brethren, this is totally against the scriptures. See, we need to study each and every angle from the Bible. Just taking only one point and building on structure doesn't give us a proper understanding at all. Therefore, dear brethren, this star is not of God at all. Let us read one more verse. Leviticus 19.31, brother. Leviticus 19.31. Amar, brother, can you read? Regard not them that have uh, familiar spirits, neither seek after wizard to be uh, def defiled by them. Uh, I am the Lord your God. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, uh, neither the seek after wizards. You see, who do all these things and all? 
usually they are defiled. Uh, the Lord doesn't like all these things. Therefore, God rejected the King Saul also. We remember now. Huh? Read one more verse, brother. Leviticus 20, verse 6. Uh, Leviticus 20, verse 6. Sunita, sir, you there? Can you read Leviticus 20, verse 6? And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go out hoarding after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. See, I will set my face against that soul and cut him off from my people. When God has warned so such a... Huh? Things uh, such as scriptures in the Bible, do you think God would send a sign that to in sky to observe? Then why would God give the Bible? Uh? Dear brethren, the Bible is not sufficient, then no oh, signs are required. Uh? Dear brethren, think when the wise men came and told about this science, what did Herod do? Herod did not believe it. He inquired the scriptures because they also had faith on the scriptures, dear brethren. Read one more verse. Jeremiah 10 chapter was 1 and 2. Muna sister, can you read Jeremiah 10, 1 and 2? Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not uh, dismayed uh, at the sign of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at him. See, the not the way of the heathen. Heathen means what? The unbelievers. Don't follow them. Be not dismayed. Be not surprised. Don't observe the signs in heaven. What is the sign in heaven? The stars, the constellation. You see, for the heathen are dismayed of them. You see, each and every person is born in the constellation. We know very well. No? See, other religions, they take constellations though. No? They call it as Kula, Gotra. Huh? And uh, they find out, oh, if this one is matching that one, whenever they do marriage, what do they do? You see, they take uh, the Gotra of a uh, male, they take the Gotra of the bride and the bridegroom, they try to match it. Oh, if the Gotras ma match, <laughs> then they marry. They ran. This is the scripture where it clearly says, don't be dismayed. By the signs of heaven. When God has himself warned not to be dismayed by the signs of heaven, will God give a sign in heaven regarding Jesus' birth? Surely not, dear brethren. So this is the work of the heathen. Read one more verse. Isaiah 47.11 Isaiah 47.11 uh, Romy sister, can you read Isaiah 47.11? Worried. Thou art worried in the multitude of counsel, thy of thy counsel. Let now the astro astrologers, the str uh, strength star gazers, gazers, the monthly uh, protagonist detectors. Stand up and save thee, thou, save thee from this thing that shall come upon thee. God is questioning. Let your astrologers, let your stargazers stand. Let them save. You see, you are predicting so many things huh? by seeing the movement of the stars and all these things. Okay, let them stand. Let them save Israel. Therefore, dear brethren, this is all totally forbidden from the scriptures. Okay. Therefore, you see the scriptures. What does the scripture say? These are not the Jewish people. What does the Bible say? These are the wise men from the East. They were not the Jewish people underlined, dear brethren. You see, they were the wise men from the East. Now, who is this wise men who, are, who came from the East? Now, why did they come from the East? Uh, how? Do they come to know about Jesus and what relationship uh, uh, do they have uh, about this king of the Jews? You see, dear brethren, if you see the map, what is this place of east of Jerusalem? You see, we, we see in the world map, this is Israel. And the east too 
Israel is Babylon. Now you tell me, did uh, the Jewish people ever go to Babylon? Did they go to Babylon or were they in Babylon sometime? Tell me. Everybody should answer. If you are like this one, then how is it possible? You should all interact. Tell me with the, whether the people of Israel went to Babylon at some time of time. Huh? Anil Budar, did Israel go to Babylon sometime? Gopal Budar? Sometime. sometime. Hmm. Yes, brother. Yes, they went to Babylon. You see? In 606 uh, BC, when Israel was taken captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, they went to Babylon. Remember? Daniel interpreting the dream in Daniel's second chapter, we saw a multi-metallic, uh, you see, human image. It was made out of four types of uh, metals. What happened? Uh, a stone came and hit. Where did the Daniel interpret the dream? He interpreted the dream in Babylon. You see, the book of Daniel, where is it written? It's written in Babylon itself. Uh, now, when Daniel interpreted the dream, who were actually in Babylon? You see, we know the story very well. You see, the king in the night, he saw a dream. But he forgot the dream. And in the morning, he called all the people of his uh, empire and told them to tell the dream and the interpretation thereof. Now, what happened then? Let us see Daniel 2.10. Daniel 2.10. Anil Buddha, read Daniel 2.10. Daniel 2, 10. Anil, brother, you got the Bible? Yes, brother. Read 2, 10. Mm -hmm. the, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can shew the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that acts such things at any medicine or uh, astrologer or Chaldean. You see? Who are there, it seems? Uh, magicians, uh, astrologers, uh, you see? Chaldeans. Uh, so, all these people were there. Read verse 12 also, brother. Uh. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious. And commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Ah, all the wise men. So these were called as the wise men. And among them was Daniel also. So once the wise men could not interpret the dream or tell the dream, immediately God, see, immediately king gave the command to kill everybody. So we all know very well the story. They went to even kill Daniel and his uh, fellow members. And that is the time that uh, they requested the time... Uh, to give one day time and uh, they would uh, tell the dream and interpretation. Next day, when they interpreted the dream, king was so happy and so surprised that uh, he accepted the interpretation of uh, Daniel. Now, what did Daniel say? Let us read verse 44 to 48. Verse 44 to 48. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read from verse 44 to 48 brother? And in the days of this king, uh, two, two forty-four to forty-eight. Okay, brother. And in the days of this king, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break it pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Ah, so God of heaven shall set up a kingdom. So that is God's kingdom. So, who is the king then? A king has to be there, no? So, slowly, the people living in Babylon came to know about a king and his kingdom that is going to be future established in Israel. 
through the interpretation of Daniel. Continue with the next. What happened? Huh? Verse For forty-six. Much, well, okay, read. Continue, please. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass thereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Ah, interpretation then, thereof sure. Uh, see the reaction of the king. What did the king do with her? Continue with her. Huh? Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. The king answered unto Daniel, and said, Of a truth is it is that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldest reveal the secret. Mm. Then the king... You see? What, what did the king see? King said, you see, that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings. So he also recognized God's kingdom, the Abhidrayam. And he also expected a king to come and rule in that kingdom. You see? Then, uh, if you see, Daniel was well rewarded. So, we all know very well that God's kingdom, this message reached to all the Babylon. We know this story that the Babylon king, Nebuchadnezzar, was so disturbed that the entire nation, the wise men were supposed to be destroyed. They were supposed to be killed. But because of Daniel, when, you see, they were saved, this news about the kingdom, that the future, the fifth universal empire that is going to be established, this new widespread among Babylon. You see, and even we have studied about Daniel 7 chapter, again the interpretation of Daniel 7 chapter, where uh, you see one like son of man approaches, uh, you see, uh, the ancient uh, days and took a kingdom from uh, him. This also, this vision and this understanding also, was, you see, completely shared among the wise men. Hence, uh, we see that uh, in Daniel 9 chapter, you see the prophecy about Jesus' first advent. Uh, you see, there's all these things uh, was written in Babylon. So, the Babylonians, especially the wise men, they were very clearly knowledgeable about uh, Jesus' first advent. Uh, that he is going to come, and he is the Messiah, and through him only, the kingdom of God shall be established on earth. You know, you remember very well, you see, this uh, story, uh, you see, where uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, heated the furnace seven times, you see, when they were supposed to uh, bow, they did not bow. What did the king do? You see, he heated the furnace seven more times and made them, uh, you see, to be thrown into fire. Now, what happened then? Were they burnt? No, they were not burnt. But what did the king see? Let us read Daniel 3, 28 and 29. Daniel 3, 28 and 29. Muna sister, can you read Daniel 3, 28 and 29? Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Sadras, Mesach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servant that trust in him, and hath changed the king's word and held their bodies, and they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Sadras, Mesach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their house shall be made a dangling, uh, because there is no other God that can deli deliver after this sort. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar himself made a degree that was to be proclaimed all over Babylon saying there is no God other than the God of Daniel. So 
clearly everybody came to know about God's kingdom and is going to be futurely established in Israel. Now, we all know very well that these were the wise men and these were the, you see, it's given that they are astrologers, astronomers and, uh, you know, they usually calculate, uh, you see, a birth of somebody based on the constellations. You see, we have now, uh, today are the horoscope. You see, each and every person born under such and such uh, constellation is having such and such character, such and such futures. So similarly, these wise men, based on the prophecies of Daniel, which Daniel has shared to them when he was in Babylon, they took the information and they calculated based on their own, in, in their own way, based on the constellation movements and calculated that uh, the king of Israel, whose kingdom is going to be shortly established, whose stone will come and pound all the images, uh, that he is going to be born in such and such time. But not exactly where. Because they did not know where the king will be born. But they approximately calculated, uh, based on their astronomical calculations, that Messiah has to be born in such and such time. But not such and such place. Uh. So immediately, you see, they came in search of the king. You see, king means where? King should be there in the palace. But when they went to the palace, you see, then only they came to know that uh, no king is born in Israel. But he was supposed to be born in a particular place called as Bethlehem, dear brethren. Hence, uh, they came to the palace. You know, Satan, very clever. Uh, you knew, you see, that... Uh, this wise man would never harm the child. But he knew that uh, Herod was uh, willing to harm the child. So immediately, what did he do? Immediately, as soon as the wise man left his palace, uh, he made the star to move exactly, stop there where uh, Jesus was born. So indirectly guiding Herod to come and kill the child. You know, it is possible to move a star. Yes, he did not move the entire star constellation but moved a particular star in that constellation. Is it, is it possible for Satan to do it? Yes, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. We read in the Bible, no? You see, Ephesians 2, 2, who now motivates the children of disobedience, you see, to do will against God. So similarly, he, he would have done definitely something to move a star, you see, and come and rest in the place of Jesus. Therefore, dear brethren, this star is not the star of God at all. This is a complete deception of the devil. Today, our Christians don't even study the Bible, don't even read the Bible without knowing all these things. They are putting star very boldly in front of their houses. Dear brethren, you see, this is how we need to study the Bible. Okay, now next. In Christmas, what else is there? Christmas tree, correct no? A Christmas tree in a cone-shaped Christmas tree. Where the Christmas tree is given in the Bible? Eh? And Santa Claus. Where Santa Claus is given in the Bible? You see? What does the Bible say? You know? Let us read. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10 chapter, verse 1, 2 and 3. Joy brother, please read. Jeremiah 10 chapter, verses 1, 2 and 3. Joel, brother, are you there? Yes, brother. <clears throat> hear, ye, hear ye the word which the Lord spake uh, unto you, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the sign of heaven, for the heathen heat. It then are dismay at them, for the custom of the people are vain. For one cut a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the work workman with the axe. Continue. Who also? Hmm. They they deck it, it uh, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammer that it move not. 
they are upright as the palm tree but speak not they must needed needs be born because they cannot be be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil neither also it is in them to good ah see <laughs> what does the eat and do it seems uh, not only they observe the stars but the custom of the ethan is what verse 3 you see they cut a tree out of the forest and the works of the hands of the workman with the axe you see the beautifully cut the christmas tree yeah, some people plant the tree itself in the rows only huh? when the christmas comes and you beautifully trim it and decorate it with beautiful lights verse 4 is given no they deck it with silver and golden Uh, silver bells, golden bells, silver moons. You see, and fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Uh, they but then see Bible says don't do all these things. See the Christmas tree, our Christmas tree is given in the Bible that it should not be done. But in spite of all these things, our Christians are doing the same things which are unscriptural. That too in the churches. Yeah, do you think that's a spirit uh, guidance? Ah. Uh? Dear brother, then what is December twenty fifth? You see, December twenty fifth is actually not our the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. December twenty fifth is actually the day where the Son God was born. You see, there was a pagan religion until Christianity came into Rome. So once the Romans they used to worship pagan gods. You see. Like uh, uh, Mitra and some other various gods and all, so they believe that their god's son was born on December twenty fifth. You see, not only that one, the Satan is very clever. He has deceived the entire mankind in such a way that many of their famous gods are born on December twenty fifth. You see, you see in the Greece, Hermes, they believe that uh, he is one of the God's son is born on twenty fifth. When he come to Buddha, they again claim that uh, he was born on December twenty fifth. When come to India, they believe that Krishna was born on December twenty fifth. You see Egypt, go to Greece, Hercules. You see various. Uh, you see and uh, Dionysus also. They believe that uh, he was uh, the one of the son uh, God, uh, and uh, these had. Uh, All these uh, dates uh, for December twenty fifth, but once this pagan uh, Roman people they got to Christianity, converted to Christianity, there was no function or no celebration in Christianity at all. And what did the people do? You see, as uh, they were uh, going out uh, to keep them in uh, the so called Christianity, they began to worship. Uh, you see. Uh, Jesus's birthday instead of their gods uh, and this God's son's birthday uh, on December twenty fifth. You see, they had their God, and they believed that that God's son was born on twenty fifth. So they replaced that God and that son with uh, Almighty God and the Son Jesus Christ. But they worshipped the same birthday. Uh, we believe that uh, God's son was born on twenty fifth. So he is also God's son. So both are one and the same. So both are God and God's son. So that is how. December twenty fifth was to be celebrated as a birth of Son of God. You see, now first of all, uh, uh, this is our twenty fifth birth came. Now, was really Jesus born at uh, December? Now let us try to calculate. First of all, this date doesn't fix to Jesus because they are trying to fix it for uh, uh, some God's son. Okay, how how do we check it in the Bible? We all know that Jesus uh, lived on this earth for thirty three years and six months. That is thirty three and a half years. Okay, we all know that Jesus died as a Passover lamb in the month of April. So when he was supposed to be born, he was supposed to be born thirty three years six months before. Now when was that one? When was that one? So thirty-three and a half years before it become, which month does it come? Let us calculate. You see, we know that Jesus died uh, in April, correct? Not 
as a Passover lamb. So let us come six months before. Forget about 33 years. Because we are not calculating years. We are calculating only the month. We are searching only the month in which Jesus was born. So let us come six months back from April. See? April to March. Huh? One month. Correct? Huh? Now March to February. Two months. Now February to January. Three months. Now January to December. Huh? Four months. So January is gone. Huh? December is also gone. Now December to never November. Five months. You see. And November to October. Six months. So Jesus was never born in December at all, dear brethren. So, if you reverse calculate from the death of Christ, we get the month of October, not the month of December at all. This is a clear biblical proof. Okay, there is other proof also. How? Where is it given? It is given to us in Luke first chapter. You see, we know uh, the father of John the Baptist. You see, Zechariah, he was serving in the temple as a priest. You see, and we all know, as per the Bible, each and every priest had an order to serve in the temple. Every month, two priests used to serve in the temple. That means, every 15 days, a priest has to serve in the temple. He has to be in the temple only. He has to, supposed to not to go to his house. So, Every 15 days, one priest should serve in a temple. That means in the entire year, 24 priests were allotted to work in the temple. Now let us see, Zechariah worked in which period? Read Luke 1st chapter 5th verse. Gobal brother, please read Luke 1st chapter 1st verse. 1st uh, chapter 5th verse. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was on the, of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Ah, see, he served in the course of Abia. Okay, so there's order for each and every priest to come and serve. Okay. Now we have in the fact, you know, shift to first shift, second shift, third shift. So he was in the shift of Abiya. Now what did he do in that period? Verse 8 and 9, brother. Go brother, read. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest office, his lot was to mourn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Ah, you see? Huh? Executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office. So there was the order, there was a the custom. Okay? Now then what happened to him? Verse 11 and 13, mother. Huh? And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt come call his name John. He saw an angel. Angel said, You shall return to your house, and uh, Elizabeth shall give birth to a son. Now, Zechariah is still in the temple. Now, when will Elizabeth, uh, you see, become conceived? Once he returns to the home, uh, dear brethren. So, once when uh, Zechariah returned to the home, you see, Elizabeth was conceived. That was her first month. Okay. Now, what is this order of the priest? Which month does that Abiya come for the work? Where is it given in the Bible? You see, dear brethren, that is given to us in 1st Chronicles 24 chapter. Okay? So, let us read 1st Chronicles 24 chapter, verse 3 and 4. Uh, who can read? Anil, brother, read, brother. 3-4, huh? brother? 3-4? Hmm. Hmm. And David distir distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eliezer and Ahimel 
Ahmed of the son of Itamar, according to their office in their service, and there were more chief men found of the son of Eliezer than of the sons of Itamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eliezer, there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and the eight among the sons of Itamar, according to the house of their fathers. Ah, so sixteen children, huh? From the sons of Eliezer. Eight children from the sons of Itamar. Now sixteen plus eight, how much? Sixteen plus eight, how much? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Very good. So twenty-four means what? Fifteen days if you put for each and every priest. Automatically, entire year will cover. Now, this is order. Now, let us see what is order. Verse 5, brother. Read verse 5. Huh? Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and the governors of the house of God, were of the son of Eliezer and of the sons of Itamar. Ah, sons of Eliezer and Itamar were combined together and are at the course. Now, what is the course? Read verse 7 to 10, brother. Ah. Now, the first lot came forth to Jehoreb, the second of Jedia, the third of Harim, the fourth to Shurim. The fifth to Malaching, Maltia, Maltia, the sixth to Mizam, Mizamin, Mizamin, the seventh to Hakos, the eighth of Abiza. Ah, eight to Abiza. That is the course where the father of John the Baptist, Zachariah, was allotted. Now, see. Now, you all know very well, which is the first month for the people of Israel? Which is the beginning of Israel, be beginning of the month, uh, beginning of the year for people of Israel? Last two weeks we studied now. Which is the first month for the people of Israel? Nisan. Nisan. Very good, sir. That means month of Abib. And for us, it is month of April. You can refer that one in Exodus 13.4. And Exodus 12, 14. Okay? So the first course comes in the month of April. Okay? The two priests will be allotted. Two groups. Uh, you see, that is Jediah and Joya Rabbiah. The second course falls in the month of May. Yes, you see? Every 15 days one means in May, two courses are there. That is Harim and Shurim. And the third course comes in the month of June. You see, that in Hebrew it is called as Sivan. You see, Malkija and Mijamim. This is the third course. And the fourth course is Akozda. You see, uh, and Abija. This comes in the month of July. In Hebrew, it is called as Tammuz. So this is the Abija course where actually Zechariah was working still in the temple. So in the month of July, he was still in the temple. Okay. Now after this July, he came to the home in the month of August. And that is the time that Elizabeth was conceived. And that was, you see, her first month. So when was John the Baptist supposed to be born? Only after nine months. So from August, if you take nine months, it will be coming exactly in the month of April. So let us calculate and see. See, August is the first month, September second month, October third month, November fourth month, December fifth month, January sixth month, February seventh month, March eighth month, April is the ninth month. So John the Baptist should have been born in the month of April. So John the Baptist was born in April. Okay. We all know very well, when John the Baptist was six months in his mother's womb, who was conceived? 
Who was conceived? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, let us read Luke. Luke, first chapter, verse 26. Please read Luke 126. Can anybody read Luke 126? Muna sister, can you read Luke 126? And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Hmm. To a virgin as opposed to the man whose name was Joseph. You see, that means in the sixth month of John the Baptist, you see, huh? Mary was conceived. Now let us calculate. When Jesus was born, which month Jesus was born, based on this calculation. See, huh? when was Mary conceived? January. Okay, no? so January to February, first month. Got it now? You see? Huh? Please see this chart. Sixth month. When Mary, when Elizabeth was six months, that is the time that she was conceived. Who? Mary was conceived. So, from January to February would be the first month of Jesus. Okay? And second month would be March. Third month would be April. Fourth month would be May. Fifth month would be June. Sixth month would be July. Seventh month would be August. Eighth month would be September. And ninth month when a child was supposed to be born, it would be in October. So in no way does it come and fall in December at all. Okay. Therefore, dear brethren, so December 25th is not there in the Bible. Bible doesn't support at all. Okay. Now, how do we cross-check it? You see, there's a way to cross-check this one also. We all know Jesus died in... When did Jesus die? In April. You see? So, go back, you see, uh, uh, from, from birth, okay? we can calculate six months further, it will be coming to the month which Jesus died, you see. That means, after his birth, if we calculate further six months, you see, we come to the month in which Jesus died. Now, if this is currently falling on April, then it means that our entire calculation of Jesus being born in October is correct. Okay? Now let us see. November would be the first month. December again would be the second month. January would be the third month. February would be the fourth month. And March would be the fifth month. And April would be the sixth month. This clearly proves that Jesus lived exactly, you see, 33 years and 6 months. That month falls exactly in Abib or Nisan or our April. Hence, December 25th is an unscriptural way of celebrating the birth of Jesus. Okay. The next thing. During Christmas, you would have observed this name, Xmas or Christ Christmas. Correct, no? Now, where did you get this uh, Xmas name? You know? Whenever we write uh, anything in mathematics, if we don't know any numerical, which is the letter we use, substitute? Which is the letter we substitute? X. X. See, that is X. Even if you don't know somebody's name, what will you write? Mr. X, Y, Z. X means what? Unknown. So, mass means what? The mass, they conduct, no? The Lord's Supper, break the bread, drink the wine. You see, that is the mass. So, X mass means we are conducting a mass for unknown reasons. Even Christ mass also, they replaced it later on. You see, Christ mass, what? Connecting the mass in the name of Christ. When the mass should be connected, when the Lord's Supper should be connected, it should be connected in December. It should be conducted yearly once, dear brother. And that way in the month of Nisan, Nisan 13, that sundown, not in morning. Dear brethren, this itself is a clear proof uh, that uh, these things are uh, unscriptural. Moreover, did Jesus ever say to remember his birthday anywhere in the Bible? No. 
Jesus said only one thing to do in his remembrance. Now, what is that one? Let us read Luke 22. Luke 22. Luke 22. 20. Luke uh, 22nd chapter, verse 15, brother. Luke 22, 15. Can somebody read? Joel, brother, can you read? Uh, okay, okay, read, read. Amar, brother, Amar, brother, please, please, read. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this, uh, pass over with you, before I suffer. You see, with desire, have I desired to eat this Passover. What did it again say in Corinthians? You see, let us read that verse also. Uh, brother, uh, read First Corinthians 11 chapter. First Corinthians 11 chapter, verse 24, brother. First Corinthians 11, 24. Joel, brother, can you read? 1 Corinthians 11 24. 11 24. Hmm. Okay. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do, not my birthday. Jesus never requested to do his birthday or celebrate his birthday. Neither did he celebrate his birthday. See, Jesus lived 33 and a half years. Forget about 30 years. At least 3 and a half years he was with the disciples. Did Jesus celebrate any of his birthday? Not at all. So, Jesus never requested. We should be doing the things which our Lord requested and which pleases him. Not the things which pleases us, dear brethren. And moreover, who is the one who celebrated the birthday? You see, the only birthday that is celebrated is given in the Bible is the King Herod. We know what and how he celebrated. You see, that was not pleasing to the Lord at all. And some people take this and argue that saying, Brother, you see, many of the people in the you see uh, church history, they also celebrated the birthday of Jesus. Dear brethren, many of the things would have been recorded in church history. But is it given in the Bible? Has any of the apostles celebrated the Lord's birthday? No. But the Bible says that they have celebrated the Lord's memorial supper and that has to be done in a proper way. Nobody has debated or nobody has questioned about the Lord's birthday. Why? Because that was not done in the church at all. Until, you see, the false doctrines crept inside the church. Even when the creeds, you see, there was a first council uh, that happened in Nicaea. There was a huge debate between God and uh, the Lord Jesus' divinity. You see, that was a huge debate. And during that time, they debated the things uh, which had uh, so much of critical uh, importance uh, in the church because that was uh, breaking the church apart. But during that time, they had no opportunity. It was not required to discuss uh, on December 25th, uh, Christmas, uh, because by that time, the entire church was almost corrupt. And they were into all these uh, religious and uh, idolatry things and all, which are unscriptural. Therefore, the people who were there, they were uh, supporting this uh, false theory. And so, nobody had a question uh, regarding uh, December 25th, because the Bible was hidden in the dead language. It was in Latin language. Nobody could read the Bible. Nobody could study the Bible. Hence, the doctrine of Trinity also crept into the church during that time only. So, already before uh, this the Trinity came inside, uh, this Christmas had already come and everybody were, uh, you see, relaxedly and enjoying uh, these things uh, because they were used to do it. Uh, dear brethren, the Bible clearly warns us uh, that uh, we are not supposed to do all these things. Uh, dear brethren, we need to follow the scriptures. Let us read a few scriptures and close. First Corinthians 10 chapter. See, Gopal Buddha, please read. First Corinthians 10, chapter verses 1 to 11. We see that uh, the people of Israel also did the same mistake. They were disobedient to God. They did not agree to God's commandments. What God told, you should have doing that one. They were violating the God's uh, commandments. Let us read, brother. First Corinthians 10, chapter, brother, verse 1. Please, brother. Gopal Buddha. Uh. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and 
all pass through the sea. Hmm. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Uh, but, you see, what do you say? All were baptized. Isn't it? All are baptized, no? Christians are baptized, no? Same way, see, the entire people of Israel were baptized in Moses. They ate the same spiritual meat. They ate the same spiritual food. They drank the same spiritual drink. You see, Christ, today, that is what the Christianity is doing. No? They are all doing everything in Christ. You see, the same way as Israel people did. Next, what did they do? Huh? But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Ah, so were... But with uh, many of them, God was not pleased. Why? Because they did their own thing, dear brethren. They tried to please uh, God in their own way, which was not pleasing to God. They did their own way. God was not pleased with them. Six lakhs, uh, sixty, I mean, six lakh people, six lakh men, they left Egypt. But how many people came to Canaan land, promised land, only two. God was not pleased with many. Next. Uh, For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. See, this is an example that we should not do the same mistake as they did. We should not lust after it, you see. We had, uh, before coming to the, we had the pleasure in doing all these things. But once if our eyes are opened, you see, our uh, ears uh, are open, our eyes are finally shutting are opened, we should have no pleasure in these things. Next, brother. Uh. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up. To play. They sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. This is what happens in Christmas. Day. They sit to eat, sit to drink. Nice cake, nice rose cookies, nice sweets, nice chocolates. Some people even drink also. Wine, biryani, all sorts of chicken, turkey, everything. They eat nicely that day completely. You see, they are soaked in drinks and... Uh, you see, wine and uh, heat uh, and they rose up to play. They celebrate it. Uh, you see, dear brethren, is God pleased with it for now? Huh? They're doing all these things for them and claim and putting everything in the name of Christ. They buy new clothes, wear it on Christmas and tell this is Christmas, Christ's birthday. Are Christ's birthday, what he is wearing? You are only wearing, no? Yeah, food, delicious food is prepared. For whom you are preparing? As per your desire. As per our desire. We like biryani, so we want biryani. We like turkey, we want turkey. Have you ever thought what Jesus likes? Does Jesus like all these things? Is, is this the birthday? And birthday, what do, how do we celebrate? You see, generally, how do we celebrate in the house? What the person, the birthday person... You see, the birthday boy or the girl, what they like, they try to please and do the things which he likes. But it is the total opposite. They eat, drink, whatever they want until this is Christ's birthday. Uh -huh. Can continue with the next. Huh? Verse 9. Hmm. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Ah, let us not commit fornication by being in the world, being in the Lord. Let us not tempt Christ. We should let us not provoke Christ. You know, doing things which are pleasing only right in our sight. Next, verse 10. Huh? Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Ah. Let us not murmur. Once the Bible says, we should surrender to the word of God. Not murmur. God is not pleased by this one. And therefore, let us do what our Lord desires and request. He never requested to do all these things. He requested a simple thing. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us humbly surrender to our God and do things which he likes, not 
we what we like okay dear brethren this is about christmas if you have any doubts any questions please feel free to ask okay we will discuss from the scriptures okay so lord bless 